Hello everyone. We're now in a good position to be able to compute inverses of larger square matrices. This is a key computational issue in linear algebra. And admittedly, it gets, um, it gets tricky or it gets hard just because it kind of, uh, you know, the, the complexity of it increases quite dramatically as the size of the inverse matrices go up. Uh, of course, these days we have computer programs that deal pretty efficiently with these things, but even with those, uh, you know, once you get to a thousand by thousand uh, matrix, uh, computing inverses is highly non-trivial. Okay, so last time we derived the following kind of um, approach to things. So let's let uh, A be an n by n matrix, which is invertible. So it does have an inverse, all right? So A inverse exists and our job is to find it. Now, how did we do that last time? So what we did is we looked at uh, the systems A times X equals EI, where EI is the sort of basis vector which is all zeros except for a single one in the ith spot, okay? Otherwise, it's zeros. Okay, so we consider this system, and we know that if A is invertible, then any system like this has a unique solution. So that was our main theorem that we talked about uh, the last few lectures. So we know this has a unique solution. say y i, i.e. a times y i equals e i. And then we saw that if we create the matrix y, which is the matrix which has these vectors y1, y2, down to yn along the columns, this thing is a right inverse. for A, i.e. A times Y is the identity matrix, and furthermore, and it is also the inverse. That was sort of the main point that we derived in our last uh, discussion of things, right? That the, the right inverse, uh, if it exists, ends up being also a left inverse. So this is how we're going to get the inverse A. So in other words, we're finding that A inverse is equal to Y. And this is then a procedure for finding the inverse of the matrix where we do things sort of essentially sort of one column at a time, find the first column of the inverse and then the second column and then so on. Okay, so we're going to illustrate that and we'll see actually that there's a kind of a shortcut uh, way of doing this sort of all at the same time. So let's have a look at an example. Suppose A is the matrix, say, 2, 4, 1, 3. Okay, let's try to find its inverse with this approach. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to look at the augmented system that has A on the left and the first basis element on the right. Okay, so let's solve this system. Okay, uh, I'm going to interchange rows one and row two, maybe because I like to have a one up in that top place. Okay, and then I'm going to use this thing here to get rid of the two below it. So I'm going to replace row two with row two minus two row one. That will give us one, three, zero. Zero, four minus uh, six is minus two. One minus zero is one. Great. Um, it's uh, now in row echelon form. We can see that it does have a unique solution because the last column is not leading and uh, there are no non-leading columns on the left-hand side. So to carry on, now we're, what we're going to do is we're going to replace R2 with um, minus a half times row 2. In other words, we're going to divide by minus 2 to get 1, 3, 0, 0, 1. Okay, then we multiply by minus a half, so we get minus a half over here. And then we're going to sort of go upwards. We're going to take this thing and get rid of that three. 
So we're going to take row 1 equals row 1 minus 3 times row 2. And that gives us the 1. I guess this one stays where it is. We can write that one first. And then um, 3 minus 3 is 0. And 0 minus 3 times 3 halves is, I guess, 3 halves. Okay. So therefore, what we see is that the solution is, say, xy equals 3 halves minus a half. Okay, now we could do this again. In fact, we need to do it uh, a second time because we need to then get the second column. This is our sort of our first column. To get the second column, we need to do the same thing with 2, 4, 1, 3, 0, 1. Okay, let's do that. Okay, so I'm not going to write them all down. I'll just do them quickly. 1, 3, 1, I'll sw swap the uh, entries. I'm going to um, take this row 2 minus 2 times row 1, so that's uh, 0 minus 2, 0 minus, uh, minus 2. Then I'm going to divide that second row by minus 2, uh, giving us 1, 1. And then I'm going to subtract um, 3 times the second row from the first row, give us 1, 0. Um, 3 minus 3 times 1 minus 3 is uh, minus 2, I guess. So therefore, that gives us x, y equals minus 2, 1. Okay, great. So we have found two columns, two column vectors uh, that solve these, uh, these kind of equations. So we're finding solutions when the right-hand side is one of these basis vectors. And so now we can put those together into a matrix. And so we can therefore deduce that A inverse should be, the first one was 3 halves minus a half. And the next one was minus 2, 1. All right, I have to check just to make sure I've done things right. So let's check our original matrix A times A inverse was what? 2, 4, 1, 3, and then 3 halves minus a half minus 2, 1. Is this really the inverse? Uh, 3 halves times 2 is 3 minus uh, 2 is 1 below it. Uh, 3 halves minus 3 halves is 0. Over on the right, minus 4 plus 4 is 0, and below it, minus 2 plus 3 is 1. All right, great. That really is the inverse. Okay, so... Yeah, that's, that's good. So that's a kind of a procedure. But now we just want to be a little bit more efficient. Okay. We'll just notice that in these two procedures, basically we were performing the same operations. It was repetitive. We're basically doing the same thing. The only thing that's changing is that the rightmost column in the two cases was a little bit different. But what happens on the left-hand side is the same throughout. That gives us the idea that we could do them both at the same time. Okay, that's a clever little idea. Okay, so let's do both columns at the same time. Okay, so to illustrate that, I'm not going to do it again with that one. I'm going to do it with a more challenging example of a 3 by 3 matrix. So let's let A be the matrix. Let's say 2, 0, 0, 1, 2, 1, 0, 1, 2. Okay, we want to find the inverse of this matrix. What we're going to do is consider a kind of large augmented matrix, an augmented augmented matrix perhaps. And we'll write it like this, um, A on the left and the identity matrix on the right. Okay, so in other words, we're going to consider the augmented matrix that has A on the left as usual. But instead of just having one column, say 1, 0, 0, one of the basis vectors, we're going to also add a second column for the second basis vector and a third column for the third basis vector. And we're going to perform uh, row reduction on this so that the left-hand side ends up in reduced row echelon form. And then we'll have simultaneously solved all three of the equations. How's that sound? 
Okay, good. All right, so let's uh, do that. Um, let us do some row reduction. Okay, but we're going to just still work on the whole level of rows. So maybe first I'm going to swap R1 and R2 just to get a 1 up in that top place. 2, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 1, 2, 0, 0, 1. Great. Now I'm going to use this thing here to get rid of the 2 below it. So R2, the new R2 is the old R2 minus 2 R1. Okay, so that's 1, 2, 1, 0, 1, 0. 2 minus 2 is 0. 0 minus 2 times 2 is minus 4. 0 minus 2 times 1 is minus 2. 1 minus 0 is 1. 0 minus 2 times 1 is minus 2. And 0 minus 2 times 0 is 0. The third row in this case is staying where it is. Okay, good. Now I'm going to move to this lower matrix, but I don't like the fact that there's a minus 4 there. So I'm going to swap rows 2 and 3. Okay, so that'll be 1, 2, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 2, 0, 0, 1, 0, minus 4, minus 2, 1, minus 2, 0. Now I have a 1 in that leading place, which is good. That makes it easier to get rid of the minus 4 below it. So we'll do that by new row 3 equals row 3 plus 4 row 2. That will give us what? First row stays where it is. Second row stays where it is. And this one becomes 0 there. A minus 2 plus 4 times 2, that's 6. 1 plus 4 times 0. Minus 2 plus 4 times 0. And 0 plus 4 times 1 is 4. Okay, good. Uh, now I'm in row echelon form. I can see that this thing is going to have solutions. Actually, you know, for all three of the, the cases that we're kind of doing uh, separately. So now we want to move to reduced row echelon form because we want to keep going until that left hand side is the identity matrix. It's in completely reduced row echelon form, which will mean that it's a three by three identity matrix. So let's divide the third row by six to get a one in that spot. 1, 2, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 2, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. Okay, now we have some fractions. Okay, 1 sixth minus 1 third and 2 thirds, I guess. Okay, so now I'm going to use this one here and I'm going to use it to get rid of the things above it. Okay, so the new row 2 is going to be the old row 2 minus 2 times row 3, and the new row 1 will be the old row 1 minus row 3. Okay, there's a bit of fractions here, but hopefully they're not too bad. So the bottom row stays where it is, 1 6 minus 1 third, 2 thirds. Then here we get 0 1 0, so we're taking this second row and subtracting 2 times row 3. Subtracting two times row three. Uh, I guess there'll be a minus a third there. Uh, minus two times row three, so a, a plus two thirds there. And one minus four thirds is minus a third. And as far as the top row goes, well, there will be a one, a two, and then a zero. And then zero minus six is minus one sixth. And then one minus, minus a third, so that's like four thirds. And zero minus two-thirds is minus two-thirds. Almost there. One more thing. We'll take this element and get rid of that two. So the new row one is the old row one minus two times row two. To get zero, zero, one, one-sixth minus one-third, two-thirds. Give yourself lots of room. Zero, one, zero, minus one-third, two-thirds, minus one-third. Try to be neat also. Okay, here we go. Uh, this first row minus two times the second row. One, zero, zero. 
Okay, row one minus two times row two. Okay, so minus one six, uh, that's plus two thirds. One six, minus one six plus two thirds. Two thirds is the same as four six. I'm gonna subtract one six, I get three six, which is one half, I think. Okay, uh, next, four thirds minus two times four thirds. Okay, that's zero. Um, and then minus two thirds minus two times minus a third. Uh, that's also zero. Okay, so we are now done. The three y vectors that we got are just these ones here. So these are the individual solutions to ax equals ei, but we've done them all at once. And the matrix that they form is self-evidently sitting right there in front of us. So this is the identity matrix on the left and A inverse on the right. So we conclude that A inverse is the matrix uh, 1 half, 0, 0, minus 1 third, 2 thirds, minus 1 third, 1 sixth, minus 1 third, 2 thirds. Okay, and if you're doing this fast, there's always a pretty good chance that uh, you made a mistake. So how do you check whether you may have made a mistake? You would multiply A times A inverse, and hopefully you will get the identity matrix. Dare we do that? Okay, so let's take A inverse and multiply it by A. So 1 half, 0, 0, minus 1 third, 2 thirds, minus 1 third, 1 sixth, minus 1 third, 2 thirds. There's A inverse. And A was up at the top, 2, 0, 0, 1, 2, 1, 0, 1, 2. 2, 0, 0, 0, 1, 2. No, what was it? 1, 2, 1, 0, 1, 2, sorry. 1, 2, 1. 1, 2, 1, 0, 1, 2. Okay, let's do this multiplication. Okay, first column times each of the rows. What do we get? 1 half times 2 plus 0 plus 0, that's 1. Below it, minus 2 thirds plus 2 thirds, that's 0. 1 6 times 2, that's 1 third, minus 1 third, that's 0. That's 0. Okay, next column, 0, 2, and 1. Um, 0 times a half plus 0 plus 0 is 0. Uh, 0 times minus 1 third plus 4 thirds uh, plus 4 thirds minus 1 third, that's 3 thirds, or 1. Below that, 0 minus 2 thirds plus 2 thirds, that's 0. Okay, things are looking good. And finally, this thing here. Uh, 0 times a half plus 0 plus 0, that's 0, and 0 plus 2 thirds minus 2 thirds is 0, and 0 minus a third plus 4 thirds is 3 thirds, which is 1. So we get A inverse A equals the identity matrix, and so we don't have to, have to check the other one, because if we have a right inverse, we now know we have a left inverse too. So the thing is invertible, and our calculation is correct. And that's it. Okay, so that's a, a solid, a little bit computationally intensive, uh, but it's it's a very elegant kind of way of computing an inverse of a matrix. And actually, there's not much of a better way by hand. There's not uh, you know formulas which are, are much better than that. Um, so this is this is life calculating inverses. Even in ordinary arithmetic, is complicated. In matrix arithmetic, it's you know, cumbersome, and if the size of the matrix gets big, well, then the job gets uh, gets more difficult. But this at least is a surefire technology.